Hey folks, in this video we're going to take a look at how to create a rubric in Moodle. So whenever you are creating an assignment, a discussion, anything that can be graded within Moodle, uh, at some point you're going to run into this section that says grade. And in order to set up the rubric or marking guide, you actually have to kind of hone in in this space to to make sure you do this correctly. So you'd give it a point value, you'd give it, you know, how much, or you'd indicate it would be a point, it's the type is points, you'd identify how much, the maximum amount of points, and then where it says grading method, you have these three options. We're gonna take a look at rubric, and then we're gonna, you know, as you were, if creating this assignment, you just fill out the, the different things. And the trick here is when you finish an assignment that you, the creating the assignment uh, artifact in Moodle. When you are ready to be done with it, you still have to actually create the rubric. So once you're here, you've filled out all the things above, you come to save and display. And the first time you do this, it brings you to this new tab called advanced grading. And under advanced grading, it still allows you to change to whatever it is that you want to. And then it identifies you know, do you want to start a new rubric from scratch, or do you want to draw from a template? So that's the first big decision you have to make. I'm actually going to draw from a template that I have in another course. However, I just want to show very quickly if I said define new, uh, new grading form from scratch, I would select it, and then I would give it a name, I would maybe give it a description, and this is for my, the rubric is, think of it for the assignment, but it's also useful for my own sense of searching and locating it later. Since if I create one rubric for one assignment, I can actually use that for other assignments. So just kind of keeping that in mind. And then down here, I will have the actual, uh, th these are the criterias and then the level of points. So I would provide you know what this area is and then what the different levels are if I need to add more criteria I can I can add a couple more I can add more levels if I want to have those and so I'd fill those out in each of these areas I provide more information about what what that level looks like in the points I would make sure I uh, are am going in and putting all the points one thing you want to make sure of is the point value in the highest column that each of the criteria ultimately add up to 100. So if I had four criteria, then if they were all weighted equally, they should all they should each be 25 points and add up to 100. They may not be equally valued. And so you might kind of play around. This might be 10 points, this might be 20 points, and then this might be 30 points and this might be 40 points. However you want to calculate it, you just want to make sure that right column is calculated to 100 points. And then down here we get a couple options. Uh, most of them are already checked and I would say leave that there. Uh, for all options that are relevant and useful to you as well as the student. Uh, in particular, you want the students to be able to actually preview the rubric. It's always important for them to be able to see how they're being evaluated. Uh, you also want to allow for to be able to add text remarks for each criteria. That way, if you select a criteria that they have uh, achieved, you can also give some more specific detailed feedback when and where that's needed. Um, so all of these you would leave, and then if it was completely filled out, you would do save and make ready. But I'm actually going to go back and also show you how you might uh, pull in a rubric from elsewhere. So we're actually going to go back, and this time we're going to create from uh, great, ugh, create new grading form from a template. So now I actually have to look for it. And so um, there's several different things I can do. I can actually just, so there can be system wide rubrics that we can create. And then there's also my own rubrics. I'm just gonna actually not put anything in the search here and just hit search. And what it's gonna pull up is actually different rubrics that I have already created across my other courses. So I'm going to keep this easy. I'm actually going to select this one right here, the assignment rubric. Um, and all I have to do is, you know, if all of this looks great, then I'm going to come right down here and use this form as a template. It's going to say, are you sure you want to do that? I'm going to say yes. And now 
boom, there it is. And notice I have kind of what's expected. I have my different levels of did not complete, partially completed, completed. These points all add up to 100, which with the, is the total value of the assignment. And then all of these are pre-checked and I am completely fine with that. So this is the new rubric, it's perfect. If I need to change anything about it, I can always go edit the current form, uh, er, er, ugh, edit the current form definition. And so I can go in and fix things up as I need be. But it's all looking good. I'm gonna go to the assignment and I'm gonna actually view this as a student so I can see what it looks like to the student. So I'll switch role, I'll go to student, and now that I'm here, notice I have this grading criteria. It's right here. As a student, I can see what the expectations are. I am best prepared to complete this assignment. So I hope that this is really useful. I'm going to do one on the marking guide as well. It's almost the same thing. There's just a little bit different in what a marking guide is versus what a rubric is. Hope this is helpful. Thank you so much.